So I'm going to run you through some of our main services and uh, also talk a little bit about um, the context of um, how, how uh, large the market for UK garden products is in, in places uh, such as Europe and beyond. So uh, just a little bit of background. Gardenex has been around since 1961. We're a trade association which is very much focused on exporting. So we're quite different to a lot of other uh, UK trade, uh, trade associations. And we cover both garden uh, products um, and also help growers to, to, to grow overseas as well. Um, we also now cover the pet product sector. We have Petquip and uh, uh, our Petquip trade association manager in the audience. Um, we started that in about 2006. We've been providing services to help people in the, in the uh, pet product sector. And we also help with the commercial horticultural sector too, um, through the Commercial Horticultural Association. Uh, so now a bit of context. Why export? Um, I've been in the export business for about 30 years and uh, the great thing about exporting is that there's a big world out there. We, we have a market of around uh, uh, 60, 65 million people, but uh, there's a big world to explore and huge, huge uh, market potential. So there is a few figures for you. So in the EU, you have over 500 million people. Europe as a whole, 700. USA, 315. Uh, Japan, 130 million. In, in all those main markets, we've been doing, uh, taking people to trade shows for a long, long time. Um, U.S. garden market. There's, there's a big diversity of opinion as to how big it's, the actual market is. Uh, it's been estimated at anywhere between uh, 30 and 100 billion dollars, but it's, it's uh, certainly the biggest market in the world for garden products. The German market, actually I saw something the other day which, which confirmed that this year the market is actually nearer that 18 billion figure. Um, and the French market, 7.5 billion, uh, that, those are both euros. That compares with the UK market, which is estimated at around 5 billion pounds. So, uh, as you can see, there's huge, huge potential there for, for UK companies. So, again, why export? What are the results from exporting? Generally, uh, through lots of various studies, uh, exporting companies are found to be more productive, achieve stronger financial performance. Then you look at markets such as Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa, uh, where they are actually entering their main spring season now. The, the seasons are reversed, so the, these markets provide real good opportunities uh, for exports at a time when your own business is perhaps quite weak in the UK. And the other thing uh, with gardening is um, you feel as though you have a foot in the door when you're talking to overseas uh, importers of garden products because we're known as the home of gardening throughout the world. So whether it's things like uh, the Eden Project, Kew Gardens, RHS Wisley, uh, the Chelsea and Hampton Court flower shows, a, l a lot of these kind of events will uh, attract people from around the world. And this is also kind of reflected by the fact that uh, there are some overseas companies that actually build their business on, on their connection with British suppliers. So you have uh, the British shop in Germany and British Garden in Austria. And uh, certainly I know British Garden is here at the show today and I think British shop is due to be here tomorrow. Um, so how, how big... Let's have a... Uh, First of all, a look at the European markets in more detail. So there was a, a study by a German organization called the IFH, which um, at that time it was looking at the 27 EU uh, countries. Uh, Croatia has been added since. But it put the value of the market at 87.3 billion euros. And again, compare that with 5 billion pounds for the, for, for the UK. Um, 
And out of that, 62% uh, was uh, estimated to be living green, so plants, flowers, and everything else. But that also includes biochemical uh, products, growing media, and so on. And 38% all kinds of garden hardware. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, another research organization, BBE, put the German market at 16 billion uh, euros, and they put the number of gardens at around 20 to 22 million gardens. Uh, France is 7.5 billion. Uh, Netherlands, uh, around 4, 4 billion. And even, um, relatively speaking, small markets such as Ireland and Belgium, as much as 600 million euros. I'll look in a bit more detail about who those, who those customers are. So Germany is uh, Europe's biggest market. It's, it's very strong, and it's the DIY stores that, that, that are uh, perhaps strongest in this section. Um, there's uh, big groups such as Obi and Bauhaus and Hornbach, who between them have hundreds of stores with most of them will have large garden center departments. Then you have specialist garden centers such as Dana. They have about 110 stores uh, in, in Germany and also in Austria. Um, but increasingly in recent years, uh, it's, it's some of the very competitive discounts. We're now f quite familiar with Aldi and Lidl. They actually do sell quite a lot of garden-related products, but it's very limited ranges and, and high volumes. But they become a, a leading factor in the market. Then we have France. Uh, again, the DIY stores there are, are, are very important. There's the likes of Leroy Merlin. Uh, Castorama, and then you have some fairly significant uh, garden centre groups such as Truffaut Jardinon and uh, Botanique, and uh, supermarkets such as Carrefour and Auchan, and also some country stores such as Gamvert and France Rural. Then in uh, Holland, it's the garden centres which have a bigger share of the market. You have some quite big garden centres there. Um, but some of the big German stores are beginning to enter the market. Hornbach has, I think, around 10 stores there now. Um, and uh, you have some homegrown stores such as Gamma and Praxis and uh, country stores such as Agri Retail. And there's a few examples of some of the big stores in Belgium. Uh, further afield, there's East Europe, Russia. Uh, these are very price-conscious markets. Uh, and it's, it tends to be quite difficult to get into these uh, markets other than through some of the big DIY stores that are already operating there. Uh, Scandinavia is, is a very good uh, market for UK companies, although it's got a short selling season. Often the spring season doesn't go going until uh, May. And some garden centres close completely uh, in the early part of the year. Um, but it's still a good market for UK products. Uh, there's uh, garden center stores such as uh, Plantagen, which has uh, stores in um, all the Scandinavian markets but apart from uh, Denmark. And then you have some of the big DIY players such as Sylvan, Kesco, and, and Bauhaus. And then there's also Switzerland and Austria, um, where the German show, Gaffer's Plus Boga, is their main, main trade show. Uh, and again, some examples of the leading players. And then you've got the Mediterranean markets where the emphasis is often on garden leisure rather than practical gardening. Um, as I mentioned before, US is the biggest, uh, large, uh, biggest market for garden products. There's huge, huge players such as Walmart, Home Depot and Lowe's, who between them have, uh, well, certainly Home Depot and Lowe's have about 4,000 stores between them. There's about 15 to 16,000 garden centers, and then there's the mail order companies, the, um, a very large landscaping sector. Most uh, garden centers in the US have uh, uh, large garden, uh, uh, large landscaping um, business as well. Um, it's a huge country. The, the, a lot of the wholesalers are regional, and um, there are very few of the garden centers which actually cross more than one or two uh, states. 
And of course, there's Canada. There's some key distributors and retailers. And uh, actually, I've seen there's one big Canadian mail order company visiting the show today. Further afield, markets such as Japan, very keen on British made branded products. Um, Middle East is, more, uh, is stronger for uh, things such as landscaping. We've had people like uh, Dubai Garden Center, they come to our Meet the Buyer Days uh, quite regularly in the UK. Uh, Australia and New Zealand, obviously, they're English speaking markets, and some UK companies are very successful there. And South Africa has some of the most beautiful garden centers in the world. Again, good prospective market. And then we have the brick markets, Brazil, Russia, India, China. They're huge populations, but gardening isn't necessarily the same as we have it in the UK, and the climates are very different. But again, potential for certain, certain product areas. And trends such as grow your own are very strong throughout the world, even as far afield as Japan. So where do we get involved? Where do Gardenex get involved? And where are the opportunities to actually meet some of these overseas uh, buyers from around the world? Um, here's an example of a few of the shows. There's Gaffer Spoger in um, Cologne in Germany, which just finished just over a week ago. Has over 37,000 visitors from around the world. I think it's 110 countries. There's a national hardware show, which is the big show in the States. Very important for the States and Canada and also um, Australia and New Zealand. And uh, there's a big Japanese show uh, called Gardex IFEX, which covers all aspects of gardening, and that's about 36,000 visitors. And what we do for UK companies uh, looking to attend those shows is we organize the British groups where we provide lots of practical support. We help you to get to the show. We help you organize your stand. We uh, organize anything from interpreters uh, and all the uh, practical side of being there. And also we promote the show presence of the British groups to, to a lot of buyers around the world. One of the things that we have is a huge database of buyer contacts. So we send uh, details of the British group um, in the form of preview leaflets uh, and uh, we encourage them to come and visit our information stand and the British exhibitors exhibiting at the show. Uh, we also do a lot of market research and, as I mentioned, uh, have a, an exclusive database of information for members. So if you're looking for distributors in Germany or um, garden centers in um, Iceland, um, you can ask us for... for, for information about those companies um, and there is a small ch charge for that information but it's a great way of uh, putting together mailing lists if you're going to exhibit at one of these shows and try and encourage someone to visit your stand. Um, and we help to organize cash grants that are available uh, through UK trade and investment. There's something called the TAP scheme where you can get uh, funding for your presence uh, in this year, the funding was £1,500 for attendance at European shows and £2,000 for shows outside of Europe. So there's lots of practical ways that we help you to do uh, trade shows overseas. Um, an example, which is the show that's just finished, Spoga Gaffer in Cologne. That's the world's largest uh, trade show for garden hardware. 37,000 buyers. 60% of the attendees come from overseas. Uh, and in recent years, um, I mean, certainly it's well attended by buyers from all over Europe. But we've even seen uh, people from markets such as uh, Uruguay, Tahiti, uh, all kinds of exotic places. Visitors are a wide, wide variety of people. It might be garden centers. It might be retailers such as garden centers, DIY stores. But it's often... Um, distributors as well that supply those, those kind of companies. And it can be anything from supermarkets to furniture or building specialists, uh, distributors and wholesalers. So uh, next year, the show dates are the 4th to the 6th of September, and we'll be organizing the British Pavilion at th that show. Um, and don't forget, there's UK Trade and Investment. They provide 
a wide range of services to help exporters, where the, where the um, sector specialists, but in terms of general help for companies, there's a whole range of services. I'm not going to go into detail, but there's UK export finance. There's things like business ops where you can sign up to receive uh, sales leads uh, which are put on the system normally by the commercial officers uh, around the world. Uh, there's uh, schemes such as OMIS where you can commission reports on um, distributors and contacts in markets overseas. Or it might even be through OMIS you can even um, uh, arrange meetings at British embassies and, and get involved in all kinds of things where you're given support by by a UK trade and investment. And there are schemes such as passport to export for um, newer exporters. Uh, but essentially the advice is if you're not already working with a UK trade and investment, get to know who your international trade advisor is and they'll be able to let you know what uh, schemes are available to exporters. Um, actually, the next slide is very much what I've just been telling you, the uh, business opportunities, the OMIS reports. Oh, and also uh, uh, hold a lot of webinars nowadays. There's, there's all kinds of products and markets that are covered. Uh, we tend to advise our members when there's things that we think are most relevant to our sector, but always look out for, for topics and markets that might be relevant to, to your particular company. There is also the Open to Export service. Um, it's a relatively new online community. You can ask all kinds of questions that are pertinent to you, and uh, it, uh, hopefully you get answers through this, this online services that are specific to your particular queries. Um, you can also, if you're looking to do your own research, or indeed know that there's research available, you can use a scheme called the EMRS scheme where you can get up to 50% of the costs uh, on a report through EMRS. Um, and then we have uh, the funding scheme, the Trade Show Access Programme. This is the funding that I was referring to. Uh, the shows that we cover currently are, as I said, the Spoger and Gaffer in Germany. For the pet sector, we cover Interzoo, which is in Nuremberg every two years. It will be at the end of uh, May next year. And Global Pet Expo, which is the big international show for the pet product sector, which takes place in, in March in Orlando. Um, the National Hardware Show, which I mentioned, that's in Vegas in, in May. And... Every other year, it, there is a show in Bologna called Zumark. So all these are, are shows where you can get government funding if, if you are eligible as an SME. Um, yes, yeah, so we always work alongside UK Trade and Investment, and, and we always help to advise the services that might be relevant to you. Um, so what do we do here at Glee? We, we have the International Buyer Centre. We've, we've been operating that for over 15 years. Um, it's a base for the buyers to use uh, and make use of uh, interpreters and uh, uh, all kinds of other services. Um, we highlight Godnex members at Glee and, and buyers can come to us if they're looking for particular product areas and we highlight the, the, the most relevant British companies for them. And we produce a directory of members which uh, we have available at our booth here and we also send it out in the mail to the post to buyers all around the world and indeed have it at the information stands uh, which we, where we have groups organised. And we've been having some meetings today. There's a, it was something we launched last year, International Buyers Connect, where we organize buyer supplier matchmaking meetings. And there have been, I think, four held today, another four uh, tomorrow. So we have buyers from markets as diverse as um, Finland, Austria, uh, Austria um, the US, um, Sweden, uh, where people can have 10-minute introductory sessions with potential buyers who um, 
and these meetings can be followed up by actual meetings at the stand. It's kind of a, it's, it's based around the Meet the Buyer days, which I'll come on to a little bit later. Um, so who are your potential customers? It's, it's a wide variety of types of organization. A lot of the buyers who come to Glee are mail order and internet sales type companies. They're always looking for niche products that you don't find anywhere else uh, in, in their particular market. So they're, they're a good hunting ground for UK companies. There's distributors and wholesalers who will sell your market within that particular, uh, the particular market that you're trying to enter. There are the garden centers, uh, the, the retailers, uh, and some of the big garden center and DIY retailer chains or supermarkets will probably want to deal with uh, the UK suppliers directly. Um, then you have landscape companies and specialists such as um, the building trade, or perhaps garden furniture retailers, and so on. Who visits Glee traditionally? There's always a strong contingent from Ireland, but uh, you see people from all over, all over Europe, uh, main markets being Germany, France, Benelux, and Scandinavia. But as I mentioned before, we see them from the US and beyond, and actually there's quite a few from Japan here today. Um, how do we reach out to an international buyer? International buyers can approach us any time, and we help them to find uh, UK companies. Um, but for you to reach out, uh, we have a directory of our members, which is sent out to about 3,600 uh, buyers around the world. That's named buyers at, at all these key organizations. Um, and we also have that directory here and at all the information stands that we... Uh, organize overseas um, and we have a huge database of buyers uh, it's actually over 11,500 records now so you can you can get details of wholesalers retailers mail order companies by market um, for all over the over the world and then we have our our own exclusive meet the buyer events where we bring a number of uh, buyers over, mostly from Europe, but we've had them from as far away as uh, US, Canada, Japan, Dubai, I think I mentioned earlier, where uh, you have the chance to apply for meetings with, with the buyers. They last around 25, 30 minutes. It's a chance to present, present your samples and your brochures. And these have resulted in, in lots of business for UK companies over the years. And our next dates are actually, that one is out of date. Um, our next dates are actually in October and uh, March and June next year, but those dates are actually slightly out of date. Oh, sorry. And we also issue sales leads, often generated, like for instance, at Gaffer Spoga, we've generated a number of sales leads, again from markets uh, all over the world. Uh, from buyers who are looking either for particular products or just generally want to source products from the UK. So there's the A to Z guide of uh, exporting. It's a practical advice for exporters. Um, and essentially, uh, our members can call us up and ask us uh, any kind of uh, advice about exporting. And we also have a library of information. Um, we also offer an intellectual property protection service. So it's designed by uh, some patent attorneys, and you can get services such as a free one-hour IP audit and 30 minutes of intellectual property advice. We also have a design deposit and trademark recognition scheme, and you can also get, uh, get access to a legal advice service with free initial advice on every aspect of business. Um, yeah, I mentioned the A to Z guide, all kinds of practical advice on export documentation, shipping, getting paid, and so on. That's, that's uh, re uh, renewed every year. A free consultation service. When you join, you can come along and have a chat with us about what you're trying to do with your ex exports, and uh, we give guidance as to what markets you might tackle and, um, and, and things that you need to consider when you're trying to improve your exporting potential. 
And uh, we also pass on leads from shows. Um, I'll just finish with a couple of details of uh, some recent ex uh, successes. Um, so one new member, I uh, talked about the Meet the Buyer Days, one, one member achieved a six-figure order from Sweden as a result of attending their very first Meet the Buyer event. Uh, a mail order company from Germany is a regular participant in, in uh, these events, as indeed is the buyer from Dubai. And they source from most of the suppliers that they meet on any one particular day. Another member received a £70,000 order after attending the Bunnings Private Supplier Briefing at uh, Gaffersboga last year. And, um, uh, yeah, so, uh, as I mentioned before, the, uh, a lot of members take advantage of using the database information to, to uh, promote their attendance at shows overseas. Uh, an example of, of a couple of success stories, there's Home to Garden, which is an exhibitor here, who recorded a 50% sales increase in the last two years, mainly due to exports, and they've taken full advantage of our services, whether it's the meet the buyers or the database information. Um, and uh, Tony Gr Grimshaw, who attended um, Gaffersboga for the first time last year, um, he managed uh, to, to get a good, good lead into Bunnings. Um, and I, the, the quote I like best is, uh, never let... Um, uh, he, he says that um, it's important that they never let their membership of Garden X lapse, and that's quite a new member. So we're around uh, all year round to help people to get into potential new markets. Uh, we're around with some expert advice on, on exporting, and we're all about identifying potential contacts. So those are the dates of the key shows that we're involved with next year, the Hardware Show in Las Vegas and Spoga Gaffer in Cologne. And if you want to know any more about equity funding and all the things that we do to help UK companies, just contact us. Oops. That's our contact details. Thank you very much.